and we're going to do another painting today, so let's get going. Well, today I'd like to show you a little example of how I would go about painting uh, using the negative painting technique and also using uh, kind of a redesign to take your photograph that you would have out in the, the field somewhere and re, uh, readjust that a little bit. And I do that by using a thumbnail sketch just like this one right here. Uh, this thumbnail sketch is, is uh, just a tiny little thing using only values, light, dark, and a middle value to establish the shapes. And so I'm going to make some changes in that when I come over to my little design over here. And I moved it over, and then I still had the rock overlapping a little bit, but not that much. And so I could get all of those things in this uh, painting. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this now. Okay, now I've laid my paper down a little bit so that it doesn't run down as much as it might have otherwise. But I'm all set to go now and work on this painting itself. I've got it all drawn up on my watercolor paper, which is 140 pound arches. And now I'm going to dive into my paint and get to work on this. So first I'm going to pick up some yellows. And I'm going to work on my lightest lights first. So I'm going to tone this uh, paper in several locations with a real light yellow. This is a kind of a mixture of yellow ochre and also some new gamboge. And I, we don't have to be too careful with this because when I come down here, I'm going to darken the outside edge of this and define a lot of little shapes in there. So I just want to get a lot of this yellow in here. I'm going to put some yellow back here as well, but it's not going to be that bright when we finish. This yellow back here is going to be quite dark because I'm going to bring the dark of these cliffs, which you see up in here, down behind and shape this. So I'll be very, very loose, and yet down in this area, wherever there's going to be foliage, I'm going to make a mixture of, I'll take a little bit of sap green, and another color I enjoy using with that is quinacridone sienna, and that kind of dulls it a little bit, and so I'll take some of this quinacridone, put over here, and I'll bring into it some of this sap green, which I'll put in this way. And now I can develop the values as they start to move back. I'm preserving some lights right up in this area, right around the edges of some of these rocks. But all this area right up in here where it's going to be bushes, I'll use a mixture of yellow, red, and green as my basic colors. Now this is going to give me a great variety. Here I'm going to pick up a little bit of quinacridone gold as well, which is a very, very strong gold. Now I'm going to trace around the edges of some of these rocks that I'm going to leave the highlights on. Bring the darks up here to this area. Bring some more greens. Be very, very bold with these colors as I'm going to drop them down into here and I might even pull in a little bit of violet way down in front that's going to kind of give this a, a base to it and I'm mainly using this for my darks right now so I've got all of these things happening very very bold very loose very loose and I can always come in and darken that up but what I'm doing is preserving a few little highlights right into here. And some of these areas where there's going to be bushes, I'm going to be a little more cautious right up in this area. Right up in here, I'm going to leave a few little highlights that are grasses or something that come up through here. And I'm even going to leave the, the shape of a branch or two that might stick through there. Now again, these are your, your light and middle values, so a lot of this is going to change before we're through. I'll just leave this little branch coming up. This is called negative painting. 
and painting with darks to reveal the lights. Okay, now as this is beginning to dry, I'll just take this uh, tape along here and I can just slide my towel along the edge and clean those edges up slightly so they don't run down uh, quite as much. I will tip the painting forward and allow the pigment to run this way. I can turn my board completely around like this and let these pigments run back into that mix and see how that gives the feeling of, of uh, grasses or something as it goes from dark to light. I'll just let that continue to run. Maybe even a little this way. And then I'll turn it back over. Put it back in its place. And I like to do a little splattering with clear water over here. I won't leave all the water on it, but as this begins to dry down, I like to hit it with some, some clear water and it makes these wonderful little shapes down in here. Let me see if I can come just a little bit closer on that and you can see these little tiny drops that come in here and uh, form these uh, I like to call them oozels, a place where the pigment is pushed away by moisture. And so we have a little bit of that happening down in there now, and we'll just let that continue to dry. While that's continuing to dry, I'm going to think about some middle values on these rocks as well. And I'm thinking about uh, more of a magenta mixed with yellow ochre to give it a sort of a pink color. Now let's get some yellow over here. I like to, rather than reaching into the, uh, the, the paint wells here, I like to reach into the mixing wells instead to get my colors. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and a little bit of blue. Now you mix yellow, red, and blue together and what's that going to give you? It's going to give you a gray. So we got to be cautious with that and I'm going to let some of this come into these areas on the rocks. Once again, very, very loose, except for the places where I want the, the color to be. Then I'm more cautious. Then I'm more cautious. there. Now I'll touch a little bit of blue down into here in a couple of different places and that will start to mingle with the pigment that's already there and give me a gray. All I need now is a little bit of yellow and then you'll see the gray start to form. Once again all of this is just the basic colors and staying in the middle value range. Another rock down in here. This one I'm leaving some very strong lights on. This one I can darken up slightly, leaving the highlight on that side. And once again, coming back in and doing a little splattering. I could be just a little bit bolder with that. And then I'm going to soften a few edges. Now you soften an edge, uh, this hard edge right in there, by taking a little clear water and pushing this along the top of it. And as soon as you place this water here, then you just touch the edge of that and let the pigment crawl back into that, crawl over that edge. And that tends to soften that edge. And usually if you do it on the side that faces the sunlight, it's going to look a little more natural. So I'll put just a few of these edges here, preserving once again these highlights so that they'll stay a little bit lighter than everything else. I'll keep this one pretty light and this one will have a little bit of a tone slightly as it comes down. 
So now we have these gray rocks, which imitate the, the rocks that we're seeing there, but we want more color, we want more drama. So all this is, a, um, is staying in the light value range and putting in the light and middle values. I really don't have to put anything back in here because I'm going to go quite dark on that. And I didn't have to define these edges either. But right out here on the edge of, of some of these branches which are which may stick out from behind here, I'm going to have I'm going to try to preserve a place where there's a few little hard edge branches that go up against this dark right back in there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll leave a branch or two that sticks out from that. And the reason I'm drawing them in, I don't have to, but I want you to see them at this point and know where those are going to come from. And that will make a nice interesting composition. And out of this little light area we'll have these branches exploding out. And a lot of people who look at my paintings say, wow, I can't believe you start off that loose. Yep, I do. And uh, because so much of the refining can be done later with the bolder colors and as darker values as we wrap those around these, like this dark back here, and wrap that around, it's going to make this very luscious and bright. So I'm going to let that dry down for a minute and then come back to it. Now I've tipped my board up a little bit so that I, I can see the painting better as I work. It's slightly slanted down, but I think you can still see it just as well as we tip this whole board up. I'm going to darken some colors down in this area using a little bit darker values. And the second glaze over the top of a previous glaze is going to really darken things up quite a bit. So I'll just get a few of these in here to get it started and I'll refine that a lot more as we go. But right now let's just get some values down in there and a lot of times I just say get some junk going on down in there. Get some of this texture that we're seeing up in, in this area and start to to build that already. We see that there's some darks down in here and here on our value study. So let's bring some of those into it right at this point. This is all too wet to be able to do any negative painting or really any refined edges right now. We want to see this blending that's happening up here. We want to allow the pigment to, to work its way down to the bottom and um, tie in with these edges as they come down. I'm going to make these dark edges and it's getting a little bit um, softer and tighter down in here and I'm going to still soften those edges again. It's not ready for negative painting yet. It's still too soft and so I'm going to keep it that way for a few more minutes. But in the meantime I've got some darks coming down and they're falling down this hill in the same structure that we have over here. So this is going to be kind of fun. We touch some blue into this now for variety and also to add the darks. And all of this pigment is mingling now. It's just all mingling down together. And I'll come up here with a little bit on the top, right under that tree, soften that edge as it comes down. Okay, now, while this is drying, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put this dark area in up here. And then when I come to the edge of these tree branches and leaves, I'm going to use the technique called negative painting. So for these colors, I'm going to um, use a rich mix of uh, 
think I'll use this this low Cornell brush, which I like a lot, holds a lot of pigment and uh, and will help me through this. I'm going to have a nice area of of uh, dark dark pigment up in here. So I'm grabbing a little bit of Carbazole Violet. I'll put that in there. I'll grab a little bit of very very strong and beautiful color called Quinacridone Sienna, which is a very bright red. And instead of having this black black that you see up there, which you would not see, it's kind of a red hill with foliage on it that's coming down behind there. I'm going to use some of the um, the reds that we're going to see up above that. And that's going to make this painting just explode with color. But I'm going to mix that with some dark darks and let that those pigments mingle together. Now a little bit of cornacridone gold. And hopefully these colors will stay and hold through and create that wonderful drama of light against dark. Now since this brush holds a pretty good point, I'm going to come in here right now. See this bead that's, that's forming at the bottom where this is running downhill? I need that. I'm going to continue to move that bead down until it comes to the edge of this form. So I'm going to just kind of keep moving that bead down. And now I've got a branch that connects up to the edge of the paper. And I've got another branch that comes out here, and I'm going to define that. And then another little branch that comes out and comes right to here. So now I'll come back and pick up some dark darks, alter that slightly, let that pigment work its way down. And now I'll rough up this edge a little bit. Bring this down, bring this down. I'm, I have a wet bead that I'm still moving. So here it comes. I'm going to leave some leaf shapes on this outside as I pull this bead down. Come up against this hill right back here. That'll be a rock. And then I've got some little branches that come up here. And I want this edge to feel broken because that's going to be the highlight around this whole structure. Alright, and I'll bring this down, a few little darks down into there, and here we go. I'm going to start coming around here. I'll leave some lights, but I'll crawl right down into this bush and create some interesting shapes. Pulling this bead down now, it's wet, so it keeps going. So now I'm going to pick up some reds over here, which when I say red, that's quinacridone sienna and very bright orange. We have that down in here, but it's subdued a little bit uh, because it's mixing with these other colors. But I'm going to bring this down in slightly and then come up. And if the pigment's moving too far, I can always take a thirsty brush. That is a brush that's clean and doesn't have pigment on it. And I can touch that right on this edge and wipe that off and touch this on this edge. So I can take that thirsty brush and get rid of this really, really dark bead that starts to come down as soon as I want it to stop. If I want it to keep moving, then I've got to keep uh, keep, keep pushing it along. But right now, we're going to bring this down, pick up some of these busy edges that are happening down here, and this becomes the shape now that we have up here as it comes around. Here we go. We're going to keep going with this now. I'll come back to my brush, pick up some quinacridone gold, mix it out here in the mixing well, and now I'm going to come down into this area with it. At the same time, I'm going to pick up some thalo, actually carbazole violet, And those colors together form a kind of a dark, rich brown. And I want there to be variety back here. Tons of variety. I want it to be dark, but I want it to have some variety to it. So, as I come over into this area, 
I'm going to soften this edge out here. I'm not sure where it's going to end yet. So I'll just soften that, soften this, lift this where I've got quite a bit of dark with a thirsty brush. Wipe that off on a towel. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit redder red right in this area and I'm going to identify a few more of these little sticks which have to be done in the negative fashion which is painting um, wet onto dry paper and I'll show a little tangle of branches that come out of this by working from the branch out. I'm going to trace that so we're painting the dark it's going to reveal the light shape with this little tangle of branches that comes out against the dark area there. Now we won't necessarily leave these perfectly white later on but we do want to um, preserve the light in enough enough that it um, has some some real interest right here. See how that has a lot of interest now as we're doing that negative painting. And we're going to bring this down. Pull this down again. And I'm going to soften an edge right up in here by putting some water out here and touching it against that edge. We want some hard edges, but we want some soft edges too. So this is a good place for that, right up in here. Soften an edge or two. These are nice and crisp and hard up in here. Let's soften one of those edges back up in there and let this pigment move down. Now I'm going to come down and pick up a, a some yellows down in here that are a little darker, a little browner, and that's going to be on this side of the, the foliage. And that's going to help this tree to look like it comes around because it's darker on this side, the light comes this way. So I'll use a darker yellow by just taking a tiny bit of that gamboge and mixing it with some of this brown that we just used out in here. At the same time, I'm going to be careful to let these edges crawl a little bit in here too so that I might have the indication of some negative painting inside of this shape as well. Really add some interest to it in here. This negative painting is something that really really makes a painting. It really, uh, it's what watercolor um, is and does is this wonderful negative painting leaving some lights. I'm going to darken this up a little bit where this tree trunk comes down against this edge. And this is going to get darker in a minute down in here because I've got some work to do on it. But we'll just leave it that way for now. Now right against this edge I'm going to make some of these little negative shapes here of grasses that are going to pull down uh, by pulling this dark down out of this area let it gradually turn darker and then pulling that dark down into these shapes We're seeing some grasses forming down in here as well. And we're taking this edge that's pretty hard right now and doing a little bit of work on it. Some soft places where it just bleeds down. Some harder places where there's harder edges up in there. But we've got to leave some of these areas so we can see those grasses. But now I'll drop a few more 
Dark yellow's up in here. Let that move around. I'm going to tip the board up again this way and let some of that run backwards. I'm running this direction now. And then just a thin, thin glaze of light of yellow out here and leaving a little bit of the white showing so that it's almost a sparkly crystal yellow that comes out into the against these darks. Okay, now now we see it go really, really dark up in here, and then we see it turning light. We have some oozel shapes up in here, which are very interesting. And we've got some strong reds here, here, and here. I think we're going to need to pick up some of those reds down in here in and under these rocks. But look how it, it explodes with color right now. Everything just jumps out to us. So as we come back to this painting now, and we're going to start to refine it even more uh, than it is, that's a, a great opportunity to come in here and work on some of these areas. But right now, we have all the elements in place. We have the light and the middle values. We have these darks that are up in these areas, and especially this dark right here, which absolutely can completely shapes this bush. Okay, I'm going to reach back into some of my reds, which you're seeing here, here, and here. And I'm going to pull just a few of those down inside the center of this bush or tree, actually. It's going to look more like a bush because we're making these branch, this branch structure so strong. But we want this to be, to pick up some of this red so it looks like we're looking through the bush, but we want to soften the edges as they come down. Now you can see I'm starting to form some negative shapes down in here as well. Don't make a big hard square like that. As soon as you get to this outside edge, soften that. Come down in here, pick up this one, and then soften that. Push it out and let it fade into the background. Now, see how delicate that makes that look? It just looks like it just kind of blows as it moves away from it. And then when we get over to this side, we're going to I'm going to use a little bit more of yellow. Um, I don't want this to change too much, but I want us to see these shapes of these negative branches down in here and this little kind of a pile of, of white and, and uh, yellow branches. And we can see some of that starting to happen in right now. I don't want them to get much darker than that. But I'm going to use a smaller brush and kind of be carefully trace along this edge. I can always come back in and push those darks or push those lights into a darker value, but it's hard to get those lights back again. So I'm just making this nice glow that's coming out from behind the rock. Touch a little bit more red right into this area, right there. And look at that nice glow. This is kind of a burning bush look. So I'm going to come down in here and bring a few more reds as well in this area. And pull this down. And on this side I'm going to be just a little bit darker and a little bit browner, not quite so red, as we try to bring a form shadow into this side of the tree. And this we're dealing with the leaves over here. We're seeing some of this rock come through. Now we're going to see the shape of these um, branches and leaves and the canopy that's on this side of it. And so we want a touch of that red showing through, but we don't want it to be as powerful as it is here and here. We want to see a little bit of it just to balance that color on this side and darken it as it comes down. Okay. I'm going to come up here and 
once again bring the yellow so that we see a little bit of shape to this canopy too. We want that to lighten up slightly. We want our real interest to be over in this area and the light to tumble down this rock over here. So, But we still got to have this dynamic, the darks that help to shape this tree as it comes up. So I'm going to continue to darken that area on this side. While it's wet, I'm dropping in more pigment. And pull in some real dark darks right down here at the bottom. where the underside of this tree comes back and meets the shrubbery along that hillside. Now let's, so we don't lose all the warmth, let's grab a little bit of this red, touch it here and here so that it picks up the warmth that we're seeing up in this area. We still want to have it, so we'll drop a little bit of that, let it mingle into it, and we still have that glow. All right. Now, these darks that we put along here helps to shape the highlight on the top of this rock right there. So now we still have this explosion of color, but we're seeing the, identifying the shapes of those rocks even more. Now one of the things we need to know is that where the light side turns to the form shadow, it's always slightly darker right along this edge. And as I begin to add that to it, you'll see that the rock looks more like a rock because we have that on there. So I'll leave that little trim right there, right at the top. And then I'll come back here and soften that edge so that the dark stays there and it blends into this wonderful glowing color that's there. And I'm going to come over here and I'll do that same thing. Sharpen up this edge and then I'll, right at the edge, draw it down and bleed it back into the background shape that we see there. And we we'll do the same thing down in here. And bring a nice dark dark to this shape right down along the bottom. And soften that edge right there. Okay, that's shaping up kind of nice. Now I'll just clean off the top of this rock as it comes over, forming this highlight. Let this rock come down against it and shape that. Clean off this one over there. Now I'm seeing these little highlights. I really need them. Now since we've got so much darks back there, we've got to do the same thing down here. We've got to come in here, make the edge right along this part right there, right along that edge. And that needs to be darker than the rest of this. So I'm going to lay that in right on the corner. And then, I'll just grab some clear water once again, and I'll just pull this down so it just bleeds into this tone that's already there. Now I've got to have these darks that are as dark as that, and it helps to pull this rock forward. I need the same thing on this rock and this rock. Soften this outside edge along the top. And bring it down into the bushes that are here with a little bit more blending as we bring it down into there. Got this rock in there. 
tie this together with this edge. Bring these darks in from the corner. in some rocks in this area and these darks will once again help to make this stand out. Leave a few places where there might be some shrubs showing through there, some branches, something that's sticking up out of the bottom. And now I begin to bring in some other darks here and there. And these dark darks against the light lights are what makes it look real. Dark dark against light lights. Our eye always goes to the darkest or to the lightest light against the darkest darks. So these darks are important as we move forward to help us feel like things in the foreground are in the foreground and not push back. Now right here I'm going to make this bush into with a, a quite a bit more detail just because it's in the foreground by leaving a few branches sticking out. Uh, these are just at random. But I need this stark in here to pull this forward and I'll blend that back into the rock. So I've got the dark where I need it which is down in here. And then I'm going to pull these other darks down in here and shape this bush in the front. I'm going to bring some, some sap green and mix it with a little yellow ochre and come down in here and bring some greens that are that kind of balance the darks up in there and finish off these foreground shapes. I'm going to see some some detail down in here, but we don't want too much of it. We want especially looking for the darks that we have down in here. They're right down here in this corner. And this is this bush right here that's folding under, so we're seeing the underside of it is what we're creating here. With a little branch or two that might, you might see stick up and out of it. We don't want highlights over here. We want to reserve our highlights for up in this area. So, so I'm just going to put some texture in here by scumbling my brush and darken up some of these areas more than they are. And we might need a few more darks down in here, but it's still a little wet to put them in yet. look at that as we move towards the finish here. Alright, now let's just to con continue to refine some of the shapes. We look it over as if it's an abstract painting. Now we say where, where do I need a few more highlights? Where do I need some darks? And just just uh, do an uh, intuitive painting at this point and say, well, it feels like it needs this, feels like it needs that, and move along. What I'm doing here is just creating a little bit of texture and a few little negative shapes. Need. I'd like to come back up and do just a little bit more work to, to shape the darks that come in here. Um, it feels like we just we, there's just a little bit too much light in there that we didn't have in our plan. So I'm going to darken up that area slightly in here so there's not quite so much sparkle here. That'll draw our attention there instead of right there. I'm going to do that by just bringing some more yellow. I'm going to dull it back slightly, but I'm just going to push this whole area back in value and you'll watch how the attention moves from that area now over to this area. Okay, it's there, we still see it, 
but by pushing it back just slightly, then um, it draws our attention to where we want it to go, and that was our plan right up in here. Now just to give it uh, some variety, sometimes in these negative shapes I like to bring a little bit of ultramarine blue or sometimes cobalt and have a little bit of blue to give us some relief from all of these reds and yellows. So I'm going to do that right down in this area. We'll still see the branch, but as it comes up, we're going to we're going to allow a little bit of blue to show through there. Now I'm going to do the same thing in a couple of more areas. One of them is going to be right here at this branch and a few down in here. And it gives a little bit of life to our painting because we don't always see these pure whites in nature. We see a combination of of colors and values and that's what makes it look more natural to us. Uh, I'm going to bring these blues down into this trunk that's bright yellow down here. That's I'm going to bring some blue down into that. We'll still see it. We'll still see it. But it just adds a little more interest to it and uh, gives us a little more scent. As that dries I'll bring even more blue down into that, but we'll have to let that dry. Now I'd like to bring some of that blue in a few places down on these rocks as well. And you know, watch how that helps us to feel more comfortable about all of these lights that we have up in there. And it starts to look a little more real. We'll see these things in nature. We're not manufacturing all of these things. They're there. But you have to look. Even up in here just a little bit. I'm just looking at it now and just trying to balance these uh, colors and tones. And usually the part that's getting direct light from the sun is going to be washed out color. And in a couple of places where it turns we're actually going to see that blue because it's the blue of the sky that's coming down this way and it um, it dulls the warm colors and leaves us uh, with a little touch of the blue of the sky down in the highlights like in this area right here. Still see the light but now it moves into a cooler and it's because we're getting that blue from the sky. That's the only reason that it's there. But it is going to balance now that we're putting these blues in these different areas. But I want to leave my lights so I don't want to get carried away. Blue, 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 blue. Okay, so now we've seen a painting emerge uh, from the basic loose values that we placed on there. Now we're, we're coming to the conclusion where we can see this painting and see how it's see how it's evolving from those light values to these darker ones but let's also look at some of the edges look how hard these edges are right in here and then we come and turn the corner and boom then it's soft and then we see hard edges again and then soft we see hard edges here and then soft edges we see dark 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 and then we see soft edges as it falls away into the distance. That makes us feel like something's back there, but we don't know what. We don't care. Where is our center of attention? Right here, right in this area, in this spot right there. That's a good place for it. But we still preserve some lights here, 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 and these little, one, little areas out there because that's the way we see in nature. We see those little light specks and we see uh, light facets. And our eye catches those before we catch the dark. And the place where the lightest light is against the darkest dark, that's an area that sucks us in first. And if we put a little detail there, the eye really jams into that area. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, I think maybe let's just try now to 
put a little uh, trial mat on there and see what we've got. Okay, I often do this from time to time just to say, hey, how's that going to look? Uh, if I were to put that in a frame at this point, would anyone be interested in that painting? And I think that I think they would. I feel like this is a powerful painting. We've gone from this as a photograph to this as a painting. You say, well, that's a pretty far stretch right there. Well, it may be, but for me, I'm more concerned about how is this going to look than I am about this. When I was there, the glow on this bush was fantastic. The light on the rocks was fantastic. The fact that this bush is right here in my photograph makes no difference. If I had walked 10 feet over here onto this side, that tree in that or bush would be right over here. It's just right where I've got it in there. So that's why photographs are, um, it, it's not a good idea to paint from your photographs. Photographs lie to us. The darks are too dark, the lights are too light, and so all we can do is go by what we saw when we were there and try to create a painting that has excitement and interest and drama and use the very thing that nature did to draw my attention to that in the first place and replicate it here in my painting. Well, thank you for joining me in my studio. This has been a fun demonstration, and I hope you'll come back again. Uh, if not, maybe I'll meet you out on the trail playing your painting somewhere. Thanks. This is Roland Lee.